Hi guys, Graham here again from Bainbridge Technologies. Today I'd like to quickly just touch on um, charging your lithium battery from a DC to DC versus uh, an alternator. There's a lot of information getting out there in regards to how well batteries charge up, or especially lithium batteries, and how easily and quickly they charge up due to their lack of uh, resistance or very little resistance in them, and how much quicker they charge from an alternator and so forth. So yes, you can charge a lithium battery from an alternator. However, we don't really suggest doing it uh, for the simple reason is how much stress and load it puts onto your alternator. So just quickly to touch on that, a lithium battery with very little resistance in line um, basically will take whatever amps you've got available left in your alternator or charging circuit, it will take. Unlike a conventional uh, AGM or a lead acid battery, they go through a charger which usually has quite a few different stages like bulk absorption and then float and storage. Now, lithium battery traditionally doesn't utilise that. So if you can put 60 amps of power into that by from your alternator, it will take 60 amps of power until it's charged. Basically, it just goes straight up and under this absorption bulb coming down storage and so forth. So the problems with that is, let's just say, for example, you've got an 80 amp alternator in your car. Now, you might have certain loads during the day that are gonna be putting on that. So if it's raining, you have windscreen wipers on or you might have a heater on and a demister and they all put a little bit of load into your battery which is being absorbed from your alternator and then your alternator is, is covering the amp or the current and the loads that those devices need to run. So let's just say you've got 20 amps of uh, current coming through there for, to run the auxiliary stuff in your, um, in your car. So you've got 60 amps of residual power there. So if you've got an alternator connected to your lithium battery, it's going to take 60 amps. Now if that car is at idle, it will still be taking out 60 amps because it's just pulling that current. So an alternator, when it says, when I say an 80 amp alternator, that's supposed to be its max output for a small peak amount of periods of time. So if you've got an alternator that's sitting there at idle on your vehicle and it's cranking out, it's 100% that it can crank out, everything's being stressed, everything's working to its max. Ultimately, that device is going to fail a lot quicker. Um, and also, the, the next thing is, the biggest things overall is heat and how quickly they heat up and you'll start seeing smoke coming out of your alternator. Um, we actually watched a video on this um, that one of our uh, suppliers and who we distribute Victron had in a boat, for instance, and the, the dangers of doing that. And this guy put in a, a $3,500 alternator to upgrade it to uh, 200 amps for his uh, new lithium battery bank and within three minutes there was smoke pouring out of it. The simple reason being is the only thing that keeps your alternator cool are the little fins inside or internal in the alternator to, you know, turning around with air. As we know, they need to turn that little bit quicker to keep moving that air and getting rid of the hot air. So if you've got an alternator that's working at max output at idle, there's not, it's no, it's probably in most diesel cars these days, under a thousand um, revolutions per minute anyway. So whereas you would think it would normally be running at three to 4,000 RPM to be getting its max out of. So therefore it's moving a lot quicker, so it's gonna move a little bit more air. But as we move into summer, especially up here in Queensland, but not even just in Queensland, down in Victoria in the high countries and out west and in Northern Territories, they get extreme heats in the summer. So you have gotta imagine that that gets amplified double underneath the bonnet of your car when you've got an alternator sitting next to your um, uh, a head as an exhaustic for instance. So a lot of things are working under stress and heat is one of the biggest killers of power uh, as well. So it's not working as efficiently. So I've seen some videos where guys are going, look, you know, this thing's putting 80 amps into my battery. It's gonna be charged up in an hour or, uh, or whatever. That's great, but you can overcharge a, a lithium battery too quickly as well. So you're gonna fall back into that habit of you know, the battery's not lasting as long. And as we all know, lithium batteries are uh, more expensive. In the long run, they're definitely cheaper, but there's no, there's no point burning, burning them out prematurely. Uh, they don't like being charged all the time anyway. They like to have a bit of power taken out and then being topped up and then taken out again as well. So to put all that power back in within an hour is just, it's definitely not required. Like lithium batteries charge up quite easily within a couple of hours if they're at 50%, most batteries with most DC chargers these days anyway. Um, so, I mean, yes, you can charge a lithium battery from an alternator. We definitely don't recommend it. There's a lot of um, evidence out there to suggest not to do it as well. And even the guys are selling these uh, beefed up 200 amp alternators for 200 series cruisers and, and alike and so forth. Yeah, great to get 200 amps into your 200 amp battery, but you don't need to charge a battery in an hour because that's going to be heating up 
unnecessarily as well. But you put stress onto that alternator for an hour, but it doesn't need to. I mean, putting 30, 40, 50 amps into a battery over a couple hour period is more than enough for most people when they're traveling uh, in between destinations anyway. But it's ultimately, you make up your own choice. But for me, if I want my devices to last a lot longer, my batteries to last a lot longer, and no more money coming out of my hip pockets, then that's the road that I'll be taking. Um, if you need any more information, please don't uh, hesitate to give us a call uh, or contact us on the links attached to this um, blog. So bye for now and uh, happy motoring.